This past October, I was honored and privileged to attend the National Electronic Student Media Convention with Middlesex Community College's Radio Podcast Club. During my time at the convention, I spoke with women from across the country about their careers in radio, the best advice they've gotten along the way, and what they'd like to see for the future of women in the industry. And here's what they had to say. Dana Schaefer, and I'm a producer for ABC News Radio. Lisa Marshall. Oh, let me see here. We'll say um, faculty member and radio station manager. Maddie Jeanette, spelled J-E-N-N-E-T-T-E, and I am the general manager at WKNC 88.1 FM HD1 Raleigh. Well, HD1 and HD2. A woman told me back when I was at an internship in 2012 that no doesn't mean no, it just means not right now. So I would say to never give up and keep believing in yourself because at one time I did give up on trying to get to, for instance, ABC and Good Morning America because that's like a goal of mine. Um, And then one year I was like, wait, why am I giving this dream up? Like, I want to do this. I can do this. So I think it's just no matter what people tell you, no, don't give up on it. I would say go with your dreams. When I was a kid, I wanted three things. I wanted to grow up and be a teacher. I wanted to have a house. I wanted to have a dog. I have all those things now, and I wanted to be in the media somehow, and and I just kept pushing. Um, Don't let anything hold you back. Um, I have a speech disorder as you can tell and if I remember all the time in like middle school I would cry before like presentations and stuff all the time I was just so like nervous about speaking but I really liked teaching but this is just always a thing that helped that um held me back from it but now I teach the classes at um my station so tell me how you got to where you are today and so what he does he took me under his wing he mentored me he was my advisor he was actually he had my job when I was a student and then he pushed me to grad school. I followed in his footsteps of where he went and he ended up being my colleague at my school. And then he retired a few years ago and we still stay in contact. So that was really the turning point. I can still tell you the classroom, the seat I sat in, it, that, that class just really changed my life. Maybe just like being chosen as the general manager at KNC, although it's not like that was a big surprise. Um, I was the only person who applied, but just the fact that I still got the position and I continue to do that every day like this. It's not my first job, but it's kind of like my first real job. So the fact that my first real job was this is crazy. Like it's such a big position to have for it to be my first job. So this role will always be like really important to me. I think everything led me to where I'm at now. And I think every high and low point of my career, every yes and no, has led me to where I'm at now. And the people that I met along the way have all helped me and shaped me to be who I am. I think at times being taken seriously when I was younger, fresh out of school and wanting to conquer the world and 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 be taken seriously by students when i first started teaching i was really careful if i wore jeans to work (laughs) someone would think i was a student you know there's nothing wrong with that but i think it's just trying to find that credibility at a younger age and i learned that if you demonstrate you know how to do things you have experience with things you can help students you know it came really quickly a lot of people still think i'm an intern i look young um So even though I'm 30 and I've been in this industry for 10 years, I think my biggest um, obstacle is the fact that people don't take me serious because of my, um, for for my appearance, right? Because I look young. Granted, I'm wearing a ridiculous uh, outfit right now, but that's to stand out and that's to show my personality. But I really think that's probably just like me looking young. And um, it's a little aggravating but at the same time, once I start talking to these people and I start sharing that to them what I do for a living and who I've worked with, they then understand, oh, okay, she's, she knows what she's talking about. I think just maybe more acceptance. You know, I think there's definitely organizations who are that 
probably are okay with it, right? But I always think more opportunities never hurts anybody. More of them here, just more of them in spaces. And there's no way to make that happen. Like that, that can't just happen overnight. It's like sus systemic and stuff. So it's just a problem in the industry and there's no good ways to solve it. I guess the most important thing is to talk about it and like realize that it's a problem and don't speak over women, hire them for positions. We're capable, stuff like that.